We've got to take immediate action, though, because to continue to ignore our financial problems is no longer an option. It just isn't. And the budget that we're going to talk about here for the next few minutes is indicative of the things that I believe that I absolutely know must happen in order for us to get our financial foundation in place, to get our house in order. This budget has been prepared with financial reality in mind. It's a sober budget. It's one that is, that is austere. You've heard that word used. But it's also realistic. It's one that is pragmatic. It's one that takes into consideration the fact that while there are cuts and while there are changes that are going to be made, that to do things too dramatically or too quickly only upsets the apple cart and runs at the risk of accomplishing the very same things that we all say we want. So we're going to move slowly. We'll talk about that as we move forward here. Most important thing to do is stop digging. When you're in financial trouble, when you're in debt, you stop digging. You don't borrow more money. There'll be discussions about that, but I'll tell you right now, I will not sign any bill, I will not sign any budget that encumbers future generations with debt that we refuse to take responsibility for today. We will not do it. I want to touch briefly on Connect. There's been a lot of discussion about it, much of it untrue, frankly. The discussion that people are being thrown out of their health care. There's not one person. We are going to shut down Connect. Let me reiterate that. The Connect conduit for health insurance will be shut down. It will not affect the health insurance of a single individual. Everybody who's on a health insurance plan already signed up last year in open enrollment. They're covered through this year and until open enrollment of 2016. At that time, rather than open enrolling on the Connect program and platform, they'll open enroll on the federal exchange. It's another exchange. They'll have access to the same types of plans with the very same providers. This is going to happen because the redundancy is of no value to us. We've heard a lot of talk about how it's the model for the nation and how it's stellar and why would we do this. The fact is, it was bleeding out. It was being heavily subsidized by both state and federal dollars. It does not have the ability to sustain itself, and we're wasting money there that could be better applied in other areas. So what are we going to do then? We have 25 to 30, almost of us, percent of us on Medicaid because we have need in this state. There is real need. I appreciate that. I understand it. I'm a guy who grew up in financially humble circumstances. I know people now and I knew a lot of people when I was young who had need for programs like this. We need to protect programs like this. We need to make sure they're available to those who need them. We need to make sure that we weed out that which is not going according to how it's supposed to, including testing people for assets and means and ensuring that those that are receiving these benefits truly need them. This is something that is going to happen.